When I first found out that I was pregnant, I was over the moon, but then the reality kind of set in. One of the hardest things I had to do when I was pregnant was go shopping for a pram. I'd look forward to picking the pram before I got to the shop, but when I actually got to the pram centre and it was full of all these mums pushing the prams round, it kind of hit me that that was something I was never going to be able to do. That was probably the first time I actually cried. The help and support that was out there while I was pregnant was next to none. It was just really, really sad to think that in this day and age you can get, you know, adaptations to be able to drive a car. But something as simple as having a baby, there's just nothing out there for, for disabled mums. But when Kelly's on the crutches, the two feet are sort of together and she sort of hops or swings. And when we try to walk Daisy, Daisy does the same little thing. <laughs> Daisy's teething at the moment, so she's whinging, you know, like they do, and so either me or a granddad or someone in the family will pick Daisy up and walk around the living room and um, just console her. And Kelly got quite upset because she said it's things like that that frustrate her because she can't do that. That's a normal thing that a normal mum would be able to do. Although my condition hasn't worsened, my condition is slowly progressing and getting better, but it's almost as if the lack of help has made me feel my disability more than I felt in a long, long time. Because there was no kind of help equipment wise out there, my family became my equipment. If I'd have spoken to someone who'd lived the fear that I had inside of how do you do this, how do you do that, that would have helped. It would have just been that bit of reassurance, you know, of, of knowing that I'm not the only person who's ever had a baby who happens to be disabled. I've always been hopeful that I'll get back onto my feet eventually. Just a case of how long is a piece of string, but at the moment we're just taking it each day as it comes and trying to manage to the best of our ability. It's almost as if people do think that disability and pregnancy is not acceptable, and I think it's because it's not seen. I've never seen a pregnant lady in a wheelchair. I've never seen anybody who's disabled with a young baby, you know, just getting on with everyday life. The reason disabled pregnancy and you know sex for disabled people is not spoken about is not because it's cringed upon and not wanted to be spoken about for the people involved who are disabled. I think it's uh, the people who are able-bodied who kind of don't know how to approach it and don't know how to go about it. I spoke to quite a lot of young girls and who were in a similar situation, similar age group to me, and. It's something that they talk about quite freely. It's just that we don't actually see this kind of thing on our screens to be able to relate to, oh yeah, I saw that on television the other day. I like to get out there and speak to people who are pregnant and people who've had children who are disabled. I'd like to know why we don't see disabled people with children in everyday life, whether it be shopping or in the park. Is it because disabled people aren't having children? Or is it because the disabled people who do have children don't have the kind of support that I've got to enable them to get out and about with the children because I don't know the answer to that.